I should bring him up. How many of you want him to sit down a little? Those who want me to bring him up, say I. Those who want him to sit down, say me. Okay, the eyes have it. Let's welcome God's servant. Apostle Joshua Selman. Come on, let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you again, Bishop, and your dear wife. Really appreciate you. It's my joy to be here. I, I didn't get to hear what he was teaching, but just a few minutes or two that I came in, just hearing the things that he was saying. Um, it is never God's desire that only a few people or just a select people seem like they were called of God and are doing great things. No. It is God's desire that in every territory there will be such a team of men and women of God doing mighty things for God. So when it looks as though God just picks one, two, three people per territory, it is not his will. It's just that many people are not willing to press to the level that will allow them carry that grace. We have a few minutes this morning and I pray something will come upon your life. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry. And say, Father, that which must come upon my life and my ministry. Come upon me, O God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning name of Jesus we pray that by your power by your grace you will deposit something upon our lives and I pray that within these few minutes we will carry very strange graces in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please sit down but be very sensitive we're here for a few minutes don't just write like Bishop said, trust God to see and hear. And information is what you hear, revelation is what you see. Hallelujah. I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk said, and set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say unto me. I felt stirred in my spirit to just challenge, this will be my last sermon and then we leave this city. But um, I have studied revivals. I have had the honor and the privilege of studying the moves of God. And like you always hear me say, I have also had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people in life and in history who have been used as cutting edge tools. It seems to me like in every generation, God seems to find a few people sometimes as few as just a single person and he will invest his power and his grace and his anointing upon that one person or those few people and they seem to be the ones doing mighty and supernatural things for the kingdom within their lifetime and then many times after they pass on then you find out that um I hope you are listening that gentleman snapping focus on listening not snapping keep that camera and listen this is how people don't receive in meetings don't feel bad eh? I'm challenging you 
when you come let your heart be open snapping my clothes or snapping is not necessary there are destinies connected to you and when you come you open up your heart praise the lord are we together so there 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 is a requisite level of passion and hunger you must give your destiny if you intend to rise and you intend to be used by God I'm speaking to ministers and let me admit to you sincerely speaking many people are not serious I'm sorry to use that word forgive me but it's true many ministers are just joking they are not serious it's not an insult but it's true even in the secular there is a requisite level of commitment you must give life and destiny as musicians as footballers as actors sports people as soon as they win an olympic while the world is celebrating them they take a break for a few months and they are back preparing for the next four years but just because we have anointing just because we have the possibility of assistance by the holy ghost it has brought a lot of carelessness a lot of laziness you cannot change a generation with that kind of understanding i've studied revivals and i've studied the moves of god i have seen god do mighty and great and terrible things in righteousness with people and i made up my mind that in my lifetime i will see god move again in my days it was a commitment that i made from the depth of my heart but then I also discovered that for everything great and everything glorious including your salvation there is a price to pay I think the first destructive doctrine in the body of Christ is the fact that everything is a gift it's a very sincere doctrine but it's a dangerous one are we together now yes if everything is a gift what then is the reward for obedience Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command thee observe and to do all not some observe and to do all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted on high above all the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you will do and observe so I'll just share with us if you do not mind just in a few minutes a few principles that are responsible for hosting God and birthing genuine revival within a territory I believe it is the will of God to see us about on fire that it will get to a point where the nations will hear that there is a move of God happening in a, a region what is this that is happening salvations are happening prophets apostles rising mighty men of the spirit that your stadiums will be packed full with people who are who hunger after god young men on fire women on fire old men on fire practices that are demonic and occultic being crumbled by the authority of the church that someone can stand on his pulpit and while he's speaking altars are on fire in several regions the bible says it shall come to pass prophet Micah saw this that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all the mountains and he says that the nations shall flow to it they will say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways hallelujah that on sunday or whatever weekday the places are packed full not just with a crowd of people hungry and desperate people desperate people you're passing the market a salmon is playing different places have been shut down to become places of development places of worship that your leaders your politicians will stand openly in the name of the lord like daniel and call upon the god of heaven and when they say keep quiet you say that's how i came here revival and awakening 
I believe that the few principles that I will share with you if kept listen men and women of God God is counting on us for the transformation of our territories you must look beyond your church beyond your congregation beyond your membership you'll be committed to them administratively speaking but the the bigger picture should be maranatha god come upon our land let our children not know not forget the god that we serve if you don't do that there will come a generation you see what is happening in the west now there will come a generation that will say i was from a lineage of one man called smith wigglesworth i used to hear that my great grandfather was healing the sick and that is none of my business all i want to do is to just serve god or, or just live my life carelessly sociologically speaking may god forbid it that our children will forget our god may god forbid it that one day to be your child that will bring police and say shut this church we have not found any relevance in society Today, the government looks at the church almost like a nuisance. The moment they see the gathering of preachers, they just believe these are hungry, political type people scheming a way of manipulating money out of people. And yet the Bible says the definition of darkness is the world without us. So there are principles that we must keep. Hallelujah. The price for true revival. Just a few minutes and we'll pray. The first price for true revival in a life and a territory is the price of intimacy with God. The first price for true revival is not leadership, it's not membership, it is the price for genuine intimacy. John 14 and verse 21 he that keepeth my commands the Bible says he it is that loves me and I will love him and we will come to him and I will manifest myself to him the first price to be used by God to shift systems and structures is not being a preacher in fact being a preacher can be the demon and the distraction to your because the will of God the secret to be in ministry is to forget about ministry first and focus on his presence your passion there are so many people who left God because they started ministry ministry became such an idol preaching engagement Apostle Joshua Selman you are busy you are all over town preaching and we call that breakthrough that is the deception that dries our prayer life dries our word life dries our passion and our commitment do you know when you off a moving fan it will still be moving and yet there is no power in it again one of the most challenging statements in scripture is found in John chapter 2 the wedding in Cana the Bible says and the wine finished very dangerous statement the feast was still going on but the wine had finished you cannot have a feast without wine and yet the wine was finished yet churches were still being built and the wine finished and conferences were still being organized but the wine had finished the price of intimacy there is nothing and there is no one that sustains the ability to take the place of God in my life I would throw this mic a thousand times to preserve his presence please listen the secret to be known is to be hidden the bible says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty you must pant and test after the presence of god more than invitation more than a desire to be known do you know what intimacy does listen to my message the evidence of genuine intimacy with god there are certain indices i also recommend my message the secret place there are five or six things that show you that your secret place is healthy 
and alive the first of it is brokenness brokenness if it is the god of the bible you meet he will never leave you the way you are no matter what celebrity you are you don't come to his presence as a celebrity you don't come to his presence as apostle joshua selman uh-uh uh-uh brokenness lord i realize that i'm nothing without you there are people clapping outside but i'm not distracted by their uploads i come to you the one who picked me from nothing and even though you have helped me today i'm not stupid enough to forget where i brought you from, where you brought me from and god says you still remember even with the lifting you still remember even with the of men bless the lord oh my soul and forget not there is something about the deception of fame and money and results these things are powerful but you will you will be shocked the degree to which they will deviate your passion for god his presence becomes your habitation like the fish cannot survive outside water like other animals cannot survive within their habitat no believer talk more of a man of god can truly survive out of his presence i love i love i love your presence I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love your love for God. You are in the secret place. You forget about your sermon and your congregation. Oh God. Praise the Lord. Let me have a crowd. Oh God, my name also must be mentioned. And God says that's not the issue. Leave all those things. Let's talk. Your heart is corrupt. Your heart has tendencies. Do you know what it means to pastor millionaires and still remain a man of integrity? Do you know what it means to have a prophetic gift where you can see everybody's account and yet have the discipline to remain nobody was born with that ability by default it's the secret place that breaks and prunes you until you have that dimension of character in the spirit there are many people your remaining where you are was not caused by demons God vetted you and found out that the safest position for your spiritual health is where you currently are. Heaven has concluded based on their report that if you ever rise beyond this level, it will be a disaster both to you and the kingdom. Hallelujah. I told God whatever you will ever give me in this life that will steal away my love for you, I'm the one who is praying it in advance. May it never, not even come near my vicinity. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Please, for some of us, God is speaking to you. Go back to where we started. Go back to how you started before I found you. When nobody knew your name. When no invitation was coming for you. When nobody was celebrating you. When you were not yet called prophet or apostle or pastor. When nobody had done it. Go back to that place. Go back to the back of that tree you used to pray alone with God. Where he found you. Go back to that place. You would pay money for a retreat and lock yourself. But right now God I'm busy. Let me finish my ministrations. I will attend to you. You cannot host the presence of God within a territory if you don't have a track record of being a man of his presence. You can fake power. You cannot fake relationship. I love, I love. 
I love your presence. Someone met me one day and said, Apostle, why is it that the moment you are coming into a meeting, people begin to fall down and shout and things begin to happen? And sometimes you are not even preaching. He said, give me that anointing. I said, there's no anointing for that. That one is the overflow of the secret place. That one is not an impartation you will receive. We have a lazy generation of people who do not want to spend time building. When you stay in a kitchen where they are cooking, if you stay long enough, Praise God. The smoke. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Are we together now? The effulgence of his presence. That you become a man who does not just visit the secret place. It is from there you administer the dimension of God committed to you. More miracles will happen through your life unconsciously than consciously when you become a man of his presence. I am telling you this. Your words will never become like the words of mere men. No. The challenge is many of us are very busy. We must create time. The secret place is the place of pruning. Don't be embarrassed by what God tells you is wrong with you be rejoice because the all seen eye of God is purifying you like gold there are times that men are clapping for you but you get to the secret place and God says in the last two weeks lust is already growing in your heart you don't just say ah God I'm a no don't do that I'm the head of counseling in my church it is that deception that kills us when you go to God let you he says search my heart try my thoughts if there is any wicked way in me and then lead me to the way everlasting lord check my heart is it lost is it pride is it arrogance is it vain glory is it a competitive spirit what has crept its way into my heart and the all-seen eye of his majesty comes you are doing very well in this area this area but in the last one month offense is growing in you and it's interrupting the flow of the anointing and you get down on your knees and say god if not you who is able to help me do i have any other god and when men are there concluding that this man cannot rise beyond this level you are there negotiating the next dimension of your fire and relevance please in one minute lay your hands on your head and say father in the name of Jesus, search my heart. Go ahead and pray. Return me back to the place of intimacy. Prune my heart of offense. Prune my heart from the spirit of lust. Prune my heart from pride and arrogance and vainglory. You may never know what is hiding in your heart waiting for your rising to reveal itself cry to the god of heaven leave preaching leave sermons leave church growth focus on your growth nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that name the name of christ depart from iniquity but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood and clay but of silver and gold some unto honor and some unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use for many of you this is what god has been waiting for he has used dreams to call you back to the secret place he has used prophecies to call you to the secret place but you are too distracted oh moses do you not see the burning bush the bush has been burning before you for months calling you to that place of the altar again Hallelujah.
Bible says, and you shall seek me and find me. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will only find me when you seek me with all your heart. If you never truly find God, it's because you did not seek him with all your heart. Where your motive is purified. Can I tell you this? I stand before the God of heaven. I'm talking to leaders. I have no desire and no ambition to build anything for myself. No. I wake up to hundreds of text messages all over the world. Apostle, you are this. What a man of God. You are that. And sometimes I leave those texts before God. And I said, Lord, this is what deceived those who went before us. This is what destroyed them. They started like this. So before this, your son becomes a fool. Guard my heart quickly. So that the sincere applauds of men. Look, you have to be sincere with yourself. If you, know, if you want to remain, rising is easy. Remaining is where the stamina is. Ye who have continued with me. Are we blessed? The presence of God. Imagine, I always give this analogy, imagine a husband and a wife. Do you know that when you build relationship with your wife or your husband or your children, you get to a point where there are names you call yourself that are tokens of your intimacy. Children have certain names they call their dad when they want to joke. A husband has a name he calls a wife when they are happy and they are just joking. This is what happens between you and God. When you become close, close to God in sincerity, there are names and there are signs he leaves with you as tokens of his presence. So you know when he has showed up in a meeting because he replicates the atmosphere of your secret place and you can say of a truth, he's here. It is in the secret place you will learn the kinds and the dimensions of anointings that are there. Most times people think these things are just impartations. When you say, oh, the anointing is here, the angelic realm, it doesn't just open just because hands are laid on you to have visions. No, sir. It is a product of growth. A herbalist does not need a relationship with you. You just come and meet him and say, I want money. And he says, bring this and that. He doesn't know your name. He doesn't care. But when you come to God, he's not interested in giving you power. He's interested in a relationship. The power is a derivative of a relationship. Are we together? You must value intimacy if you want to see revival happen. You must value intimacy. A man of God was escorting another man to the grave of William Branham and just for a side tour and while they went as they got close to the vicinity of that grave suddenly he found out he was walking alone and he turned and he found the other man just standing there shaking like a leaf and saying what is happening to me he was coming close to the grave of a man who had died for a long time but the residue of that secret place was still there when you become a person of the secret you can shake someone good afternoon sir and that person returns to his shop and places that same hand and does not know what is suddenly bringing customers you are a living extension of the ark of his presence it's not about preaching hallelujah so someone can say pastor i, I just passed you or i came to drop water and i found out the growth has gone you brought heaven unconsciously most miracles are not just products of a casual preparation oh god i have a miracle meeting this night please bless people there's no need to fear when you have a track record of his presence because your assignment is to create the atmosphere for his presence to come and if you is something that is your habitation it will happen naturally most of the things that we really call miracles are 
the fruits of genuine intimacy. Many of the people who later would carry mighty miracle ministries did not plan to have it it was the depth of their staying power with god they noticed when they came out every time they ministered there were strange occurrences please desire intimacy for some of you maybe after this conference you must trust god to wrap up the year and run for a retreat and just go and sit down there and say lord i'm here again the last time I was here was many years ago, but your boy is back. The prodigal son came to himself and said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy to be called your son, but take me as one of your servants. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second prize for true revival? Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Psalm 25 and verse 14. We reign and we legislate in this system on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we have access to. The Bible says the secret of the Lord so God has secrets. There is no great man who gives access to every information to everybody. Please look up. If I come to pastor's house, your, any pastor here or your bishop or any man of God, if I come to your house, you have a living room, is that true? You have a kitchen, you have other inner chambers. Only there is no responsible man who brings a visitor from day one and says, come, come into my bedroom look at where i keep money look at where no you don't do that there are visitors who come to they are in your house but where in your house are they some of them can stay at the gate that is where your trust for them kept them if they earn the right and the trust grows the next time they will come to your living room but there are people who are so close to you you can even bring them they are sitting on your bed your wife is sitting on the bed they are there they can even sit on the ground because of that depth of intimacy there are chambers in the spirit and not everywhere is accessible to everybody. Let me tell you sincerely. The secret of the Lord is not with them who are born again. It's with them that fear him. Is the word Yirat Adonai. The fear, reverence for God. And the Bible says he will show them his covenants. Do you know what that means? Come. Let me show you the secrets that control this cosmos and you will open your eyes to see and on the strength of what you have seen you will return back and begin to do exploits in the spirit. We must access the secrets of the kingdom. In Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 Revelation 3 from verse 7 and 8 it says and the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things saith he that is holy he that is true and he that had the key of david do you know what that means that is a mystery because keys stand for access there was something that david found david the man after god's heart the key was named in honor of him. The key of David. And that whoever has that key, he can open. There are things you can open, but they can be shut again. Because they were not opened by the key of David. You can open the destinies of men and they leave your church and they are, it's shut again in the evening. But not when you possess this mystery. It's called the key of David. That with it you can open anything and it will remain open. And you can shut it it will remain short. Do you have that key? It is with that key you stand and speak upon men that your destiny be open and no power, no enchantment, no divination under this earth has a way to shut that door again. Hold the key of David. I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. I had a vision years ago 
and in that vision I saw a very big door bishop like an ancient door and it had smaller doors connected to it and those doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time the door would open light would just come out of it and on every small door a scripture was written on it and the Lord was revealing to me something to me from that vision he said every time the, the revelation of a scripture is imprinted upon your spirit the light that comes from that door is the grace to validate that revelation you have caught so every revelation you claim to have caught and you did not catch the grace to prove its reality you have not caught it even if you have written books about it so every time God shows me something I'm not quick to teach it I wait has the light to be able to demonstrate this thing has it come I write these things unto you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach are we together light you must cry not just for revelation you can read a book you can open your bible you can search and all you are reading is a storybook can i tell you this isaiah 29 verse 11 i hope i get i got it we have to rush isaiah 29 and verse 11 please read it if you're a christian is projected one to read and the vision of all is become unto you stop what is happening to the book the book is what sealed not closed sealed so you can open the book and yet it is still sealed the visions that are in a book but that book is sealed not closed it says which men deliver to one that is educated saying use your education to read what is written here and his result is i cannot why for it is sealed this is beyond the realm of intellect next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i'm not even learned in the first place there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand barring you will need the spirit of revelation to open your eyes the words of a book that is sealed so you will be surprised that you are reading and reading and reading and you will never see anything but then when the seals are broken suddenly your eyes begin to see you must cry not just for the grace to study scripture but the spirit of revelation it was on account of this that paul was praying over the church of ephesus in chapter 1 reading from verse 15 down that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that ye may know flooded with light thou will show us the part of life it is in your light that we see light Pray for the spirit of revelation. Can I tell you this? Church and ministry will remain mysteriously painful when the people who come and sit under your care are not fed with genuine light. We live in a world right now where there are so many options and the impatience of members has heightened again and again. They don't have the patience to sit down under any church or any assembly that will not feed them with quality, word, life applicable kingdom truths. If you don't have the spirit of revelation after two months you'll be tired. You will preach everything you know. You will spend the other two months preaching all that your friends have preached. You will spend the other two months preaching all you found in the internet. By the sixth month, you are really tired. This ministry is for years and for your lifetime. You must tap into an endless supply. It, otherwise, you know, someone called me one time and said, Apostle, how do you do it? In a week, I don't know how many sermons you preach. And the topics sometimes are east and west. I told them, I said, I'm not doing anything. I've only found a fountain 
a fountain whose streams never, never, never go down. Our fathers before us used to organize meetings for 60 days. Morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening. Papa Hagen and all these people, they would preach morning, evening and not be tired. Something is wrong with the fountain we are drawing from. We must pray and say, God, lead me to that rock again. Lead me to that fountain. Let there be an endless supply of revelation. There are only 52 weeks in a year. It should not bore you that you lack a salmon. No, there's too much that is done in this scripture. Please pray whilst you are seated. Lord, the miracle of open eyes. Break that seal for me. Someone is praying. This may be the reason why your church is not growing. Pray. This may be the reason why increase is not coming. You may be sincere. But will God bring people that you can feed? I will give you pastors after my heart. Access to revelation, oh God. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see you. In the name of Jesus. Shanan Saparato Secretesikata. Open the books of the Bible. Let my eyes see. Let me draw forth life applicable truths. First for my life. And then to feed the blessed people you have connected to me. Lord, I am tired of just rigmaroling, teaching what is not life applicable teachings. I know that I'm not feeding the people. Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this. He said feed my sheep feed my lamb feed my sheep feed my lamb show that you love me as a man of God by the quality of the teachings you give my sheep hallelujah hallelujah one of the ways that we trigger the spirit of revelation is by the attitude of study. Study to show yourself approved, the Bible says. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Every man of God must have a library of quality resources from people with proven record. Not just people you like, people you need. If you listen only from people you like, you will never rise. And in the night when others are sleeping, you are awake. Salut sabratakata. Spirit of revelation come upon me. Open me to this. And from that time alone with God, the series for the next six weeks comes. And you will be surprised. There are people who have done who have written books and preached certain sermons that bless them. Most of my teachings today that continue to bless the body of Christ, even the name came to me by revelation. It's not that I just wrote it like that. It came by the Spirit. When it comes from eternity, it will last. The reason why we sing songs of Bob Fitz and Don Moen and those songs don't die is because they were not composed. They came from a dimension that is eternal. Hallelujah. The spirit of revelation. Miracles, signs and wonders can draw people to your church. But it is the word of God that builds people. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace not i commend you to the miraculous not i commend you to the gifts of the spirit not i commend you to the apostolic and the prophetic when it has to do with building and establishing men the formula is i commend you first to god then to the word of his grace he said it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified men and women of god please listen to me Thank God for the power of the miraculous. And we need to understand this. Thank God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But can I tell you this? 
it will take more than miracles to build people they saw jesus heal the sick raise the dead but some still doubted when he resurrected it is the word of god that purifies it is the word of god that creates maturity in the believer we must turn our altars into platforms where the word of god is taught i submit to you that on the average and i say this respectfully i only say this because i'm talking to men and women of god the average you can pick a believer at random outside in a marketplace anywhere and just discuss with him on the matters of the kingdom and you will find out the scorecard is very low the the spiritual understanding of a territory is a reflection of the quality of the men of god within that territory and the word that they communicate we must trust god that our members become matured their maturity will help us to find rest hallelujah if not you will labor on members for 10 years and because the only thing they receive is miracles one person can come from somewhere and in five minutes he has swayed their heart forever these are people you've labored with for five years but because there was no stamina through the world members must be matured they must be matured That spiritual maturity that comes by the Spirit. Teach them the word. If I call, let me use one person, just come. Any one person at all. Come, please, quickly come. Watch this. If I run an interview for this gentleman now, I'm not going to embarrass you, don't worry. How long have you been born again? Can you remember? Oh, not up to a year. Oh, praise God. Now, you're a good example. Now, imagine that this guy just got born again, maybe a few months ago now. And when this guy becomes five or six years old in the Lord, and I come like a believer trying to vet his understanding, and I say, so tell me the things you have learned about the kingdom. What do you know about the doctrine of scripture? What do you know? Can you lead another man to Christ? And can you mature him call an average church member attach a new convert and say build this person into a strong person he does not even know what to do do you know that the only thing he just knows is okay do you know what are you born again yes let me try to get you filled with the holy ghost he struggles around there as if he's, he's as if he's, he's, he's reciting a, a satanic charm just to get someone filled with the holy ghost and when that is done he doesn't know what else to do follow me to my church he says let's go that is his idea of spiritual maturity something is wrong the reason why there is no consistency of growth within a territory is there is no defined formula for spiritual growth that the people can have after five or six months or two years he's one of the frequent faces you see in the church so naturally you will make him a deacon or naturally you make him something now remember see how immature this man is now he has come to a position of leadership and now he does not understand anything about death to the flesh he does not understand the principles of prayer humility character he does not understand the mysteries that can turn things these are the things that make us matured in the spirit now this guy is leading 50 people he can lead he will only lead from the lens of his limitation Believers must be matured. That's why little things that shake them. He does not know that there is a price to following God. Suddenly little persecution comes on account of the word. Pastor, I'm tired. I'm leaving this church. I want peace of mind. I'm, I'm, and you are saying after how many years? Because there is no stature and stamina. Pastor, I, I, I love God, but there's no man coming to marry me. I've been seven years in this church. Thank you for all. I, I, I need to marry. I need to. And you say, ah, were you not mentored that you must love God more than the things of this world? Is the entire pursuit for God centered around the mundane things? Please, let's, let's be intentional about building the people that God brings in our lives. Most of what happens in the body of Christ 
is just topical sermons and I don't have a problem with it but we must create systems to build believers in doctrine that they may be established and they may be strong so I just pick one scripture and Jesus said it is well that becomes my sermon no problem with that but that is not going to build a believer sustainably so when the challenges of life come our people are very weak they cannot stand Jesus took time to teach them when you begin to read the, 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 the character of his teachings, he started with what we call the Beatitudes, teaching them the culture and the character of the kingdom. Then he got to a point where he was contrasting all they had known from the scribes and the Pharisees. You say this in your law, but this is what I'm introducing to you now. He mentored them powerfully. So when he left, they had that stability. We must build people. We must build people in truth. We must build people in power. That the average believer, when there is an attack in their life, they are not just thinking pastor first. They will worry you. There is an attack. They remember that sermon. Oh, James 5.13. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. My wife, where are you? Come. Let's do what pastor has taught us now. You see that? And they begin to pray when it works for them they only bring the testimony and say thank you for your mentorship thank you for your leadership thank you for your discipleship you have cultured us to understand now we ourselves have become signs and wonders we must not train a need driven people who continue to hold on to our clothes for everything pastor pray for me pastor fast for me pastor do this one for me you are about to sleep they say wake up they blackmail you with their problems let them be matured and take responsibility thank you hallelujah there are many people today who blame pastors for their problems i called you by 2 a.m you didn't pray for me and now look at now my leg if you had prayed for me no but i taught you were you not listening You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Let me give us the last key and we'll pray. This is probably one of the reasons why we are gathered here. The third prize for true revival is an unusual dimension of the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. Not just the anointing, an unusual dimension. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24 I have found David my servant look up please I found David since but I could not anoint him because I was looking for my servant I found David from birth but I could not anoint David because David had not become my servant yet. He didn't say, I have found David. I found David, but I was waiting till David became my servant. That is a very long journey. When you just read that, you say, I found, no, 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 no. I found Joshua Selman, but I had to wait until the dealings of the spirit carved him into becoming my servant. It is my servant I am looking for to anoint, not David. I found you, but the anointing has been hanging, waiting until the day you are turned to become my servant. The hallmark of sonship, mysteriously, is servanthood. Let this mind be in you, Philippians chapter 
chapter 2 from, uh, uh, from verse 5 it says which was in Christ Jesus and it says even though he was God he did not consider it robbery but he humbled himself he proved his sonship in his servanthood hallelujah that he made himself of no reputation he came and died even the death of criminals wherefore on account of that God had so highly exalted him given him an office that is above any other that every time you invoke that office that all the systems must come into alignment and that office was captured in a name the name is not Jesus the name is Lord Jesus was not a name God gave him Jesus was a name his mother gave him as revealed even the angels said he will be called this he will be called that he will be called this you'll be called that but then when he was on earth they gave him that name as a means of identification in the beginning was the word the rider upon the horse having a name that no man knew his name is the word of god when that coronation happened in heaven the name that was given to jesus is lord lord means absolute owner controller that was what the psalmist saw in chapter 24 when he said the earth is the Lord's. That means whoever has this office is the owner of the earth. Lord. So when you say in Jesus name nothing happens because you are only calling the Jewish name of a man. The power is in his lordship. The revelation of his lordship is really where the power that is the administrative office of heaven we only call the name jesus so that people will know that the lord we are talking about is not a judge in court that that lord is the one who became jesus yeshua when he walked upon the earth but the revelation is not j-e-s-u-s is -S, why it doesn't work it is a consciousness of lord if you have that consciousness even if you don't pronounce the name the demons know what they are hearing hallelujah number three an unusual dimension of the anointing i have found david i got distracted please let's go back there my servant and then with my holy oil have i anointed him with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him we're reading to 24 the enemy as a result of that anointing shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him verse 3 i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him for but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted please hear me it truly takes a superior dimension of the anointing to bring principalities and powers that control territories under the obedience of the christ psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways that it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies the greatness of thy power that means the degree to which your enemies submit is a measure of the power that you control through the greatness not the availability the extent the greatness of thy power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was teaching in the house of cornelius the salmon that would now graft the Gentiles to become part of this commonwealth. He said, how God anointed. Not just that God anointed. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. And as a result, he went about doing good. It takes more than a good heart to do good. It takes more than sympathy to do good. Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord is upon me he said the messianic prophecy because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn verse 3 
to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, giving them beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, to the end that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he, through their life and their exploits, might be glorified. John 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified. That means this is how God is glorified through the saints. When ye bear much fruit, not little fruit, notable results. When that happens, Galatians 1.24 becomes the reality in your life. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God. The extent of the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the mighty things, they glorified God. I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my voice to you. Awesome. I lift my hands You're the awesome God Hallelujah We're wrapping up now Unusual dimensions of the anointing for as long as you are generally anointed there will be no place for you in this end time ministry I submit to you sincerely for as long as you are generally anointed I'm anointed too uh -uh. the space is for shifters of systems unusual dimensions of the anointing dimensions of power that dumbfounds principalities and powers this is a notable miracle we cannot hide it how do you hide this let me tell you this when god wants to announce your ministry it does not take time he just needs to find something that is notable enough and he will do something through your life and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again before they finish talking about what he did yesterday fire has brought another one today fire has brought another it will do you more than what posters can do billboards many times are wonderful but if we are not careful they are a revelation of the low level fire we carry there, there is I'm not saying anything is wrong with that but there is only so much a billboard can do there is only so much a poster can do when the palliatives were looted in Nigeria, nobody put a poster and said, this is where it is. The moment they find food there, they will run, they will climb the zinc, they will tear. If you become like that warehouse, people will follow you like they follow the warehouse. I tell you this. Enough of these begging members. Beg, please come to my church. If you are not happy, you can go. Come on now, please. This is not to sponsor pride but there is a nobility there is an honor that genuine priesthood carries that when men see you they begin to rejoice they say finally Zali I continue to pray every time and I say oh God increase and multiply this fire increase and multiply this grace if you are not on fire men will be tired of seeing you i promise you they will be excited when they come for your few conferences they will be excited when you come into a city but the ones that now stay with you in church they become too familiar because there's nothing supernatural for them to see they are tired of seeing you tired of hearing the same thing they can almost predict what you will preach and they get to a point where they are weary you change clothes because of your appetite for new things you change hair because of your appetite for new things and if the anointing does not become ever increasing members will be tired they will love you but they will leave are we together 
that every time there is something God is doing in your life there is something God is doing in the church there is a genuine non-stage managed manifestation of the power of God provable here and now not testimonies of what God did before I, I used to know God did this remember you were there that day you know what Jesus Christ the same yesterday today don't just talk about the God of yesterday uh -uh. there is nothing more convincing than seeing the reality of the things that you demonstrate here and now when you tell people God can anoint let them see it when you say God can lift let them see it when you say God can change let them see it when when they have a track record of your integrity with God nobody will take your word for granted I hope you I'm, I'm not being forgive me I'm not just shouting at you you, you get the point now it's a wake-up call listen listen to me it's not because of tribe I assure you it's not because of your personality no Apostle, why do people just come receive miracles and run back? All that is a joke, I tell you. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you burn. You don't know the degree of inconvenience people can go through when they are sure that they will find genuine fire. A herbalist lives in a place where you walk as if you are going to the end of the earth before you meet him and when politicians are desperate even if it's to walk backward they will go backward who are you remove your shoe they, they, I am senator remove your shoe and they remove it because they want to win election there is a level of fire that when you carry almost every other factor becomes endurable if they know they will get they will endure everything Apostle, we are not doing well because of the timing. The venue we are using only allows us to use in the morning and people are sleeping. It's a lie. It's because I have, I'm in an area where there are many civil servants. So in the weekday they are working, it's still a lie. The hospital is always full of patients. Always. The hospital does not go around looking for patients. No. The pharmacy is always full of people. There is no market that is empty. Even days when it's not the market day. Someone can come and quickly say, let me carry something. Unusual. Please, men of God. You have to get, get past this level of nominal anointing. General anointing. You pray for 100 people. One person says, well, it's like I'm healed. He's not even sure. You too, you know nothing left you to the person. Why will people believe you? Be honest with yourself and be honest with those who listen to you. We live in a world where there are options. My brothers and sisters, there are options today. There are options. So, Do you know that many miracles that are celebrated in many assemblies, those miracles were not bettered by those people. The members know where they got it from. They just don't want trouble. That's why they return back to share it there. But the truth is they really know where that miracle came from. We are going to pray. Let me give you two keys that increases the anointing. Number one, prayer and fasting. Luke chapter 4, please, 14 and 15. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. In the name of Jesus, conquer the appetite for food. Conquer, food is good. Don't get me wrong. Food is important. But if you allow the spirit of gluttony to eat you up, forget about end time power. Fire for signs and wonders. No, sir. No, sir. The Bible says in Jesus having prayed and fasted for 40 days. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Asaba. And suddenly there went out a fame of him through the entire region round about. Verse 15. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Prayer and fasting. Not prayer and sleeping. Or not fasting and sleeping. 
that you will say I'm fasting and then you will sleep and just wake up quarter to five and just say hallelujah while you're on your way bathing you say Lord I give you glory you didn't fast in all fairness fasting is not fasting until you spend quality time praying and you spend quality time studying the word of God the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word is God blessing you this is my opinion it's not a doctrine in scripture if you are a man of God here and at least in a week you don't fast once I don't consider you serious I am sorry forgive me but it's true I absolutely don't consider you serious not with the forces we have in this our territory not with the reality that is on ground my goodness we are not faking this thing oh there is a do you know there are anointings that when you carry there are rules to maintain them so before the anointing comes god will ask you can you bear the burden of maintaining this anointing there are anointings when you receive there is a minimum prayer hour that keeps it if you don't commit yourself to it you will lose that anointing believe me prayer and fasting Zikos kaparakata. lock yourself turn your parlor into an altar everybody is sleeping honey are you praying is everything all right yes i'm just entering the new level of my life Zikos kaparuskeda. Shikapatata. worship is playing in the background off all your lights so that you are not distracted stroll there in that darkness mantas kebarotasia rekete bakatosia while you are praying demons are watching you angels are watching you the realm of the spirit is bearing witness you are signing that register no devil will come and harass you in public no you don't just say demons go because you saw it in the bible there is a track record if they don't witness you praying they will not honor you when you cast them out jesus i know so there are people they know it's not only angels that know people the realm of the spirit know people you're on your way to your church and there is an entourage of fire going ahead of you before you arrive someone who just came the first time while he's sitting suddenly he's shaking what is happening to me pastor is on his way coming is this the man you call pastor he doesn't just call you pastor because he found you in the front row he calls you pastor indeed he knows what he felt while you were preaching he knows what was happening to him all of a sudden his stubborn child that would not sit down in church is there quiet because he's under the influence of an unction he cannot explain it takes more than your sermon to transform people there must be a deposit of spirit power upon your life there is a price burn your candles in the night set your alarm clock conquer slumber conquer gluttony i'm carrying the destiny of generations nothing may happen but you are attracting a dimension of the holy ghost one day you will go to pray as usual suddenly the heavens are open and god will enter a covenant with you and say my son from tonight that everywhere you go across the nations i will back you i will defend you please sit down we are going to pray now how could you have a cold church that way it is not because another church has members that you don't have members is a lie there are enough people in every society every political party whether it's PDP, APC or anyone when they perform rally there are still people there regardless of who so it's, it's not because it has nothing to do with those factors hallelujah when you stand to preach as you are teaching there are activations there are doors opening every member returns back with a testimony do you know what was happening to me while pastor was preaching and he said so it was happening to you too said, ah, ah. 
while I was happening, look at my employment letter just came. Who is this man? And they say, come. They gather all the 10, 15 people and say, let's go. Go and humble yourself. There is something about this man. Members are not stupid people. They evaluate your speakings versus their results. I'm being honest with you because I believe there is something God is doing in Asaba. I'm going to pray for you shortly. That something from heaven will come upon your life and turn every pulpit in this city to an inferno of fire. Hallelujah. I, I went to just honor a particular father of faith just recently before I would come and then I was I was in in the ministry and when I was done one of the leaders in the ministry called me and said apostle you don't know what happened I said what happened and he said um, there is a man who had been sick in this church for a very long time we've prayed and prayed and prayed but the day you came among the ministers you were greeting you just shook him and he left this I'm talking of one of the top leaders he said we can't believe this his medical report the man is waiting for me now in Abuja to come back and see him and said I cannot believe this this is a medical report that I'm not going to mention it to honor him this is something that even you as a man of God if God gives you a miracle for you know that God honored you it does not take long for God to send helpers for you nobody will sow into the life of nothing I entered your city I have been here four days people have blessed me in this city people I do not know those people are supposed to come to you and bless you why are they not giving you money why are they not blessing you it's not just about favor it's about impact everybody is a giver they just don't think you are deserving of their resources the same person who will refuse to bless you the same person who will hear that ah you need this watch your car as a man of god and not bless you will now have another man come into the city and carry one tenth of what you were begging for he will multiply it times ten and go and kneel down to another man of god and say let it be an honor to sow into your altar i tell you everybody is a giver there is a level of fire they are looking for to sow into now, uh, please forgive me i hope i'm not insulting forgive me if i'm breaking any protocol I came into your city and I'm sure some of the people who have blessed me and I'm, I'm grateful for that I'm sure some of them are your members I'm grateful that they blessed me but I will be happier if they did that to you that someone can come and say sir with this thing you did in this family no we are billionaires money is not a problem but this problem this is what money cannot solve that God used you to do this we vow that every conference and every convention we will overwrite it and I'm not talking of you pleading with them it's a covenant with God and God brings you into a financial Sabbath so that you can focus on the things that matter it's not money that makes ministry is an impactful ministry that that draws the resources that attend to it you catch fire and be a blessing to people and men will surprise you you will lay gold as dust i tell you you will not even know what to do with it prayer and fasting the second key finally to receive an unusual dimension of the anointing is impartation. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Impartation. Impartation is a system that allows for spiritual transference. You transfer spiritual possibilities through a mystery called impartation. The Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And as a result, the children of Israel hearkened unto him as di and did as the Lord commanded Moses. So they were not just respecting Moses for nothing. There was an anointing that compelled that loyalty. When he transferred it to Joshua, they treated him the same. I taught during the sessions in this church over the weekend that 
there are different levels of the anointing and there are different dimensions and they do not replace or cover for themselves the healing anointing will not make you rich the healing anointing is administered within the jurisdiction of wellness and wholeness the anointing for favor will not make you healed no it is left for you through spiritual intelligence and discernment to walk with the Holy Ghost and piece together the different dimensions of the anointings that you would require there are ingredients that if you are making fried rice you don't use there are ingredients that when you are making soup you don't use they are useful but not for what you are cooking it is your assignment to say Lord what are you building what is the name of this thing you are building ah in this that I are building I need the anointing for favor here I need the anointing for this I need the spirit of might because this is a controversial ministry God is giving me I need stamina in the spirit and the Holy Ghost supplies this dimension and his instrument for that transference is men not oil oil does not anoint it can fry egg it can fry yam it can do all of these things but oil does not anoint you can drop a bottle in your house demons will kick it and oppress you oil only anoints because an anointed man anointed it there's nothing wrong with oil don't get me wrong God's authorized storehouse for his power on earth is men so when God wants to extend his hand and his benevolence over people he uses men men and some of these things are they are not necessarily men who have qualified just by themselves sometimes it's an election of grace he appoints men by the spirit and commits a dimension of his spiritual investment upon them and they become distributors of it every time god sends a word to jacob is because he's looking at israel it is not for jacob it is for israel but there is one key i must teach you that governs receiving the anointing i shared it here i don't have the time to share everything matthew chapter 10 and verse 4 you can buy the tapes for the meeting the weekend meeting and you can listen to it I taught on the anointing and the Lord will help you Matthew chapter 10 oh dear let's let's go to Hebrews 7 7 would get it better dear I was looking for I hope I got that scripture well the Bible says and without all contradiction the less the less is not the weaker the less is not the less spiritual the less is not the one who is on the ground the less is the one who is needing that dimension of the anointing are we together now yes so the word less there embarrasses a lot of people because they don't want to show i'm weak i'm, I'm a big man of god no the less there means that there must be a receiver and a giver it says without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better that means at every point please come down here my, my my dear friend look at me you are here spiritually and even though you are making impact no man hold my hands can lift himself it is not within your power no even if you are a midwife the day you will give birth another midwife will have to help you give birth just because you are a midwife does not mean you will lift yourself Jesus your Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until someone opened his own heavens your Jesus as the son of God his heavens were closed for 30 years and he came to a strange prophet who was in town called John and John saw him he said I'm not even worthy to untie your shoes but Jesus said liberty is a principle suffer it to be so that scriptures will be fulfilled and he dipped him in water when he brought him out your bible says and the heavens opened that was when his heavens opened and the father spoke if jesus had gone to do ministry just like that he would have been surprised even though he was jesus and the heavens opened and a voice spoke this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he commanded asaba hear ye him who has declared that the city should hear you 
who has declared that the city should hear you hear ye him is an anointing there is a grace that comes on you that will compel every territory to honor the grace of god deposited in you just because you have what to say does not mean men will listen to you there is a hear ye him anointing it's the anointing that will make people inconvenience themselves and come to say the lord is in this place thank you are you ready to pray i understand some of you have traveled from far i understand some of you are great and men and women of god in this place veterans of the gospel haven't served the lord in various capacities listen let me tell you this i have not come here as one who has come to outshine you and make you feel like you are not doing anything serious anybody who does that is not matured the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic is to guide and quote the city it will never be said that people are just sleeping while sermons are going on and pinging and browsing and doing no 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 it will be said that the fire upon altars are burning reconciliations happening marriage is working children coming apostles and prophets rising membership growing both in quality and quantity and if this is what you desire then together as a family of faith where you are seated i like you to pray one prayer maranatha lord we desire you to come visit our land again is someone praying lord visit this land again visit this land again let our children not forget the heritage of the spirit that was deposited upon this land let a time not come oh god when your counsel is forgotten let your word not be scarce in our land a pastor is praying Sila parota skadabarata maranatha o god please pray lord purify me the workings that must happen in my spirit to allow me whole superior dimensions of your grace i receive that dealing of the spirit in the name of jesus christ he that bears fruit my father will prune so that he will bear more fruit Train me, O oh God. Cut away the excesses from my life. I repent of lust. I repent of pride. I repent of vain glory. I repent of competition. I repent of jealousy. In the name of Jesus, I apply the blood upon my life and my destiny. No more playing gimmicks in church. No more playing gimmicks in ministry i want to be authentic i want to be sincere i cut away from useless ministerial associations useless relationships that do not have any spiritual bearing that are destroying my focus planting wrong seeds in my heart i re-edit my associations I like you to pray one last prayer fresh oil oh god the journey for the future will need more than yesterday's oil lord i thank you for the prophetic that you have given me i thank you for the apostolic that you have given me i thank you for the healing grace i thank you for the evangelistic grace but more oh god more oh god send fire from heaven upon my destiny the times that we live in are evil times they require a manifestation of the power the grace the wisdom the unction of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah before i pray for us apologize i've taken a few I, i'm sure it would have finished by now but you will not regret your coming here this morning i want us to pray one last prayer listen we must pray and ask god to help us love our congregation not just use them love them genuinely 
Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Prove it by feeding my sheep. Everyone here, you are going to pray for your members. Lord, I love these people. I thank you for giving them to me. It doesn't matter whether they are blessing you or not. It doesn't matter whether they appreciate what God is using you to do or not. You cannot bless a people you do not love. Please lift your voice in one minute. Lord, I pray. I know that you have been offended as a minister. They have spoken about you. They have spoken against you. They have betrayed you, betrayed your wife. They have betrayed your trust. You have poured your heart to them. You have labored. Some of them have been blessed. They forgot about you. Some of them had opportunities to lift you and support the work and they left you you know and all those kinds of things but i like you to pray lord i love them all the same i passionately love them from the depth of my heart i love them in the name of jesus go ahead and pray hallelujah hallelujah please be sensitive we're rounding up listen to me i believe in impartation i believe that a man can carry something he did not once have i am a product of many anointings many anointings we may not be many but i want you to know that our fathers who have gone many of them have joined the cloud of witnesses today these were men and women who labored and served the purposes of God. Ordinary people, some of them. And they encountered Elohim in dramatic dimensions. Some of them met certain human vessels and their lives changed. You see, this grace that is upon us is older than us. We are not the first people to carry it. Others carried it and passed this baton to us. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. This is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. We're not the first to carry the anointing for miracles. It's like a baton. Others ran with it as best as they knew. And now it is our turn in history. And if Christ tarries one day, we will also hand it over. So it is not something that is any man's property. We are stewards of it. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You are about to receive something that is very ancient very ancient it's not something that is 100 years old no it's not something that is 50 years old no mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight mother guys are rising here tonight Estas are rising here tonight ah. for the kings to arise for revival to return for the kings to be born for revival to return yeah Ali Ali oh Ali oh Ali Ali oh oh Ali Ali oh, Ali oh, Ali Ali oh, help that man. Hey, Ali Ali oh, Hallelujah! I'm seeing tongues of fire, and I'm seeing the number thirteen. Bring them out. I stretch my hands now, Father let that fire engulf a man of god help them please whether you are an usher or not a woman of god i shift you to a new dimension in the spirit bring them out in the name of jesus step into new fountains 
spring of ancient waters in the name of Jesus Christ I set you on fire Barata shkalika barato ziata Ebrete teke baraka tojeketa Shalakata mato ziata Grebete skopere toshelekata I want to pray There is the ministry of women That God is betting in this city There are strange women After the order of Deborah I want to pray for you There is the womb of the spirit That is betting women of power Lord where are they I stretch my hands Deborah's arise Deborah's arise By the spirit of God Wailing women Women of power and prayer And prophecy I call that deep. I open up the fountains of the deep. Shele kaparita, shase zekata seketepa, embrete kaparoto sotoba, embrete desete selepato ziata. Stir up anointing. Stir up graces. Ela shalata seketa, krete peke to satela kata, mente prete ke dosiata. Hear me. I want to pray for you right now. There are some of you, even though you are men of God and you love God, the truth is that there are altars that are vowed that you will not rise. Zechariah chapter one and verse eighteen. What seest thou? And he said, four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against judah so that no man does lift up his head he said but i have sent four carpenters i am praying right now that any man here any woman any family that every altar is sitting on your destiny vowing that you will not represent the purposes of god right now i declare by fire let those altars catch fire help this man catch fire catch fire Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Harata sila baruta chekete. Hear me. The Bible says the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest he dips his hand in iniquity. The Lord wants to release the spirit of revelation. There is a grace that opens you up to scripture. I'm praying right now. Father, I don't know where they are, but I pray in the name of Jesus. Upon everyone who has cried and prayed and fasted for a new dimension of the grace for revelation, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus at the count of three that that grace will mantle your life. One, two, Three, take that grace now. Help them, please. Take that fire now. Access. Access the seeing eyes, the hearing ears. Help this man so he doesn't enjoy anyone. Help them, please. Help them. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them. The seeing eyes in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I release upon you the grace for revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, this man, look at me. Lift your hands. You are stepping into a new dimension. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. This guy, you are you a pastor? No, I'm talking this guy. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from huh? No. Is there another mic? Just give me two minutes. 
What am I seeing that is similar between me and you? He said, it's, He's from where? Plateau State. You are from my state. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm seeing something connecting me and you. The Lord is going to help you. I stretch my hands, step into a new dimension of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon a pastor right now. It's a grace for the prophetic. I don't know where that pastor is. I need to prophesy to him. In the name of Jesus. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not. When anyone is under the anointing. I'm seeing the grace for the prophetic. I stir it up in the name of Jesus. I stir it up in the name of Jesus. Gila Paruka. Authentic prophecy authentic prophecy I shift you to that realm I shift you to that dimension in the name of Jesus Christ this lady on blue come your life is about to change what do you do my dear huh? do you know that God is raising you to be a powerful woman of God I don't know anything about you but I want to pray for you that in the name of Jesus the Christ of God you will start having strange dreams prophetic dreams and in those dreams you will see fire is burning you I'm seeing an angel pouring oil upon you I shift you to that dimension in the name of Jesus take that anointing now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name, Ezekiel. I want to pray for you, Who is Ezekiel. And then, um, Ezekiel, when you find someone like that, I'm hearing that name, Ezekiel. I just want to pray for you. We're going to pray and anoint every every church that not only will fire burn upon the altar it will remain burning upon that altar can i declare speed upon you because the truth is that there are some of you who love god sincerely but there is a lot of delay it takes time to do very simple spiritual things it takes forever he says satisfy me early with your mercy there is timing to this thing hallelujah miracles signs wonders miracles signs wonders miracles signs wonders the lord is bringing you to that realm in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is bringing you to that realm. Miracles, signs, wonders. Not only him, I want to pray. Whatever stops testimonies in your church, that while you are praying with all your heart, people never return with results. Right now I stretch my hands. The anointing and the grace is called the grace for performance. Blessed is she that believes. It says, for unto her there shall be a performance. In the name of Jesus, take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, carry that anointing now. That young man lifting your hands at the back wearing suit. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Take that grace now. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray speed. Please listen. Whether you are an usher or not. I just have two or three minutes and I'm done on stage here. When I pray this prayer. I don't know why it happens. You may find people running physically. Not by the anointing. Not intentionally. As God breaks delay, whether you are an usher or not, don't worry, you will still receive. If anyone is under the anointing, help them so they don't break the chairs and also injure themselves. Hallelujah. 
and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah the Bible says and he ran on barefoot and he overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel I want to pray and end circles of delay and fruitless labor I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus the son of the living God at the count of three father anyone here who needs speed I declare right now speed one two three take that grace speed 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 in ministry speed in help them help them help them speed in the name of Jesus I declare speed never delayed again never delayed again that in one year you will do much for the kingdom I declare speed over your family let the hand of the Lord come upon you you will overtake your contemporaries you will overtake your peers you will overtake your equals in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah John chapter 17 and when you read from verse 1 to 6 Jesus was praying and he said all that you have given me hallelujah it says all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture will be fulfilled there are as many as we are here I know we are different pastors with our different congregations but can I tell you there are people sent to you not even me will be able to bless them because they were sent to you there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent I want to pray for you and I want you to join me in that prayer Lord everyone you have sent and connected to my grace wherever they are in Asaba we call them by prophecy they locate your assembly they come they are planted and they flourish lift your voice and pray in one minute lift your voice and pray in one minute lift your voice and pray in one minute hallelujah hallelujah the bible says the lord gave the word bishop he said great was the company of them that published it you are going to pray lord raise people raise people that will become pillars in my life and ministry no matter how anointed you are you cannot stand alone you need people who believe in you in the secret and in the open enough to say we will stake our lives the bible says certain men came to david in the cave of adulam and they covenanted with themselves that we will make you king even though they saw him hiding his hiding was not an issue for them they said we will still help you rise and we will allow you to be lord over us i pray for you may the lord take away disloyal people from your life take away disloyal people from your ministry in the name of jesus christ and i pray that god will bring the aarons and the horse that will lift your hands in the name of jesus christ let me pray for finances this demon that wants to destroy the work of the lord many people have great visions but finances the devil just shuts those doors to make sure you are crippled the truth is that there are some of you you are disciplined enough if God grants you access to the resources you will cause havoc to darkness and so the devil will make sure that every road is closed but in the name of Jesus by the power of prophecy everyone who has been appointed to stand by you financially and to lift up your hands in ministry in the name of Jesus who is my God and your God I command enjoy their ministry now enjoy their ministry now enjoy their ministry now can I tell you this anybody who comes into this land to divide the church and the body of Christ we close the spiritual gate over this city let me say it again that anybody that steps his feet upon this soil with the assignment to cause division to make pastors fight pastors 
to make people look forward to the downfall of others i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace we shut the spiritual borders of asaba against evil doers we declare that the body of christ listen regardless your differences unity is not uniformity you may not believe the same thing but it is not enough reason to look forward to the downfall of another i pray there will be genuine love in the body of christ regardless of denomination in the name of jesus christ i pray that there will be genuine love and honor mutual honor one man of god to another i pray that the spirit of offense will be far from the church in asaba in the name of jesus that together as an inferno of fire several denominations you may define doctrines and perspectives but in the name of jesus i pray let there be unity hear me never find yourself fighting another person looking forward to his downfall so that you will enjoy it does not profit you everybody rises based on his revelation galatians 2 2 i went up by revelation you go up by your revelation don't especially because we're mentoring younger ministers let's be careful what we tell these people as they look up to us so that we don't deceive them to come up with camps i am for paul i am for apollos both of them will suffer we must let the people know that there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism i look forward to a time where a man of god is organizing a program that is not your business and you can pay for buses and just send a letter and say man of god i'm just happy about what god is doing this is my contribution and that that man of god can acknowledge him and say thank god for this my brother there you may not believe the same thing there are many places i preach i don't i have my reservations over what i believe and what i don't believe but it's too small a reason to create seditions you must love the body of christ father we thank you for this conference in the name of jesus christ okay there's need for oil is it all right if i pray on the oil at least let something come upon your head thank you my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil hallelujah this is how we'll do it for the sake of time if we could have a bowl or two so that we don't have people come i'm going to just pray listen this is ordinary olive oil there's nothing supernatural about this you use this in your kitchen to cook this this does not carry any power at all but it is when it is anointed it loses its earthly significance as ordinary oil and takes on something heavenly hallelujah i'm going to pray on this maybe we'll do it this way if i can have i wish we could have so that we can have one point here and they can just pass it round and then and then one and then one here so that we can finish on time father this is ordinary oil but lord we declare according to scripture you taught us that anointing with oil can be a transmission a transmitter of your power therefore i pray oh god that your power will rest upon this oil i call this an oil of breakthrough let it be an oil of favor let it be an oil for the miraculous let it be an oil for increased influence let it be an oil for restoration let it be an oil for establishment let it be an oil for performance that as this oil comes upon your head within the few minutes we have truly i pray that it will not just be an empty impartation that you will go back to your assemblies and you will know something came upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen while this is happening you can just be praying in the spirit all through and just take it so that the yes reverend dan is there any other person can help i can pour this is there any other bowl if we can have thank you yes so we can uh, drop it somewhere as it comes on your head just begin to pray my life is changing i'm declaring speak in the name of jesus christ speak in the name of jesus christ speak in the name of jesus christ 
you can touch your head touch your hand as a symbol of your productivity and begin to declare by the spirit be patient everyone will get it in the name of jesus don't just touch your head go back and pray and you are declaring in the name of jesus i will never be the same i carry this unction signs and wonders my prayer group my job my business my assembly in the name of jesus christ anoint your head anoint your hand prophesy upon your hand it is my symbol of productivity let me have it so that i'll just a minute oil is finished I can still put some more is someone praying I'd like you to begin to see a new ministry signs and wonders overflows by the spirit I'd like you to see it and declare by the spirit it also applies to your business it also applies to your children that the Egyptians that I saw yesterday I see no more forever declare by the power of the Holy Ghost a new dimension of prayer a new dimension of signs and of wonders in the name of Jesus I declare are you praying regardless of where your church is located we declare fresh fire God is drawing people they are coming by the Spirit of God they are coming by the hand of God in the name of Jesus call forth your destiny help us call them men of power men of grace help us of the war in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. He said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. In the name of Jesus, I become indestructible. Indestructible. The spirit of death has no power over my life. In the name of Jesus, I am planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, I am fat and flourishing in the name of jesus christ and the lord of peace shall give me peace always and by all means in the name of jesus christ the bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified don't keep quiet don't keep quiet we're almost rounding up you are praying for your members father in the name of jesus they are receiving the word they are understanding the word the world is growing and prevailing over their lives in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and pray because you are anointed he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake say it. touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm decree and declare we speak to the systems open up to my ministry open up to my destiny open up to the grace of God upon my life I command visibility I declare visibility by the power of the Holy Ghost visibility in the name of Jesus Christ neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel pray for your finances I command supernatural finances no more lack someone is praying by the Spirit of the Living God no more lack in the name of Jesus Pray for signs and wonders. From this week, oh God, I command signs and wonders by the Spirit of God. The sick are healed, the blind are healed, the crippled walk. No table dimensions of the grace of God. The Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Declare that the word upon your lips is prevailing. Prevailing over situations and circumstances
Are we done? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now I see some of you holding bottles of oil. Lift it up. Let me me pray on it or any point of contact in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the Spirit of the Living God that this oil that you carry that from today I stand in agreement with Bishop and we declare may it become a conduit of the power of God in the name of Jesus that it will become like the rod of Moses that became the rod of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you there are times that even ministers themselves can need a miracle I pray for you that every miracle that you need to make your calling and your election sure I pray and I call on my God who is your God may that miracle be delivered to your hands any man of God here owing you are owing rent maybe your venue you are trusting God for lifting I agree with you between now and the end of December let there be a strange miracle for you let me pray any one of you appointed to death that the devil wants to kill you so that it will discourage all around in the name of Jesus I speak oh Ed, shut your mouth against these destinies in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you whatever will steal your love and your passion for God if it's an association if it's a relationship if it's an open door whatever it is that will make you forget about God in the name of Jesus may it never come to your life whatever will make you to not become a man and a woman of solid character may my God who is your God take it out of your life in the name of Jesus the prayer the fire on your prayer altar will never go down Bishop thank you so much for this opportunity and Asaba thank you so much I honor and I celebrate every man and every woman of God thank you for this opportunity to be a blessing the Lord increase you in Jesus name Okay, Bishop has requested that I pray for the church. Everything that is alive.